So, you may have noticed that Amazon's new Lord of the Rings TV show has caused a bit of a stir in recent days. A lengthy Vanity Fair article has finally given us some actual insights into the production and some very interesting promo images of the various characters. There's a lot more to talk about in terms of the article and the direction the show's going, which I'll probably do once the trailer eventually drops, but as for the character photos themselves, well, people began to notice things. Now, I'd like to make clear that diverse casting is no bad thing by itself, because let's be honest, a lot of groups and minorities have had kind of a shitty deal from Hollywood over the years, so it's good to see them getting more opportunities now. In fact, I fully support this in most movies and TV shows. But here's the problem. This isn't your average movie or TV show. It's Lord of the Rings, a fantasy epic set in a prehistoric northern Europe that was explicitly described by its creator as his own attempt to create a mythology for England. Because of that, it features characters and cultures largely derived from Anglo-Saxon myths and legends, which is a diplomatic way of saying that most of the characters in it are white. Not exactly ideal by today's standards, maybe, but there it is. That's the way Tolkien wrote it. And for the past 70 years or so, that's pretty much how everyone accepted it. So needless to say, fans were a bit confused when they saw elves looking like this, or dwarves looking like this, or characters that never played an active role in warfare looking like this. And of course, the internet being what it is, an intelligent, thoughtful, and measured discussion was soon had by all. Honestly, the degree of vitriol, hatred, and absolute fury that's erupted around this show is enough to make The Last Jedi look like a good-natured disagreement over the right amount of mustard to put on your hot dog. Before you know it, fans of the series were up in arms over what they saw as the bastardization of their beloved world and characters. And right on cue, the inevitable slew of incendiary articles from professional activists Journalists began popping up, accusing these fans of being the literal incarnation of the National Socialist Party of Germany. Actually, now that I think about it, they arrived a little ahead of Q, almost like they totally knew this was going to happen and had their rebuttals primed and ready to go. So why does any of this matter, you might ask? Who really cares if elves and dwarves are black now? Who cares if Galadriel is now a sword-swinging warrior princess even though that totally conflicts with her known character history? Who cares if hobbits, sorry, Harfoots are now a multi-ethnic society, despite coming from a confined geographical area. In fact, who cares if Sauron is now played by a woman, or the One Ring is now a bracelet with a USB charger attached to it, or the Rahirim now ride into battle on the back of Harley Davidsons? Actually, that sounds fucking awesome. The point I'm making here is that all of this stuff, whether it's major or minor, all falls under the same umbrella, changing the established lore of this world simply because you want to. And that's what fans have really got a problem problem with, changing and overwriting the world that someone else created to make it fit with what you want it to be instead of changing your story to fit with what's already established. You know, I'm trying to think of the exact quality associated with such a mentality. Sheer fucking hubris. Ah, thank you, Admiral Bitchface. Now don't get me wrong, I understand the pressure on companies and studios these days to produce products which are more in line with modern culture. The problem is that Lord of the Rings isn't about modern culture. It's set in an age long before recorded history, and it was written by a man who grew up in a very different era from today, his life and worldview shaped by different cultural forces. So naturally, that was reflected in the world that he built. Would Tolkien have written it this way if he'd been born in the 1990s and rattled his books off on an iPad pro while sipping an almond milk frappuccino? Probably not, but tough shit. That's what he created and it's not up to us to go fucking around with it. Peter Jackson understood that pretty well back in 2001, which is why he was smart enough to stay as faithful to the source material as possible, regardless of his own personal feelings and beliefs. That's why the elves in his movies are portrayed as tall, slender, and without exception, fair-skinned. That's why the hobbits are ethnically homogenous, because the Shire is basically a stand-in for an idealised version of pre-industrial England. That's why the only woman to even get remotely involved in actual warfare is Eowyn, because that's how Tolkien wrote it. 
You might not like it, you might wish he'd done it differently, but as I said before, tough shit. You don't get to make that choice because you didn't write Lord of the Rings. Now, all of this brings me to the counter-arguments to this fan criticism, which basically amount to, you're a bunch of racist and sexist assholes who just can't stand to see strong women or non-white characters on screen. <laughs> Now, aside from the fact that this is nothing more than a convenient smokescreen to deflect criticism and avoid engaging with the actual substance of the argument, it's the kind of thing that's been overused to the point where it's lost all semblance of meaning now. Calling someone or something racist in 2022 is a bit like remarking on the weather. It's something that just kind of happens as part of normal conversation now. It's also completely fucking wrong in this case. Expressing dissatisfaction with the showrunners for altering the established lore of a beloved series to fit with present day political climates is not racism. It's a valid concern from fans that have seen one too many franchise get sacrificed on the altar of corporate greed and political correctness. Are people saying you can't or shouldn't have diverse casting in movies and TV now? Of course not, that would be fucking ludicrous. In fact, like I said earlier, given minorities who didn't get many opportunities in the past a better chance now is absolutely a good thing. But that doesn't mean you can do it everywhere in every situation. Sometimes it's just not going to fit with the story and setting, and the more you try to force it in, the more you end up pissing people off. Like, if your movie happens to be set in feudal Japan and half the characters are Caucasian without any explanation, then people are probably going to have some questions for you. If the next Wonder Woman now has a bunch of male Amazons for no apparent reason, people are rightly going to wonder what the fuck's going on. If the next Black Panther now has Asian Wakandans that everyone pretends have always been living there, then I'd imagine fans of the first film would be up in arms. The point I'm making here is that the casting should always be appropriate to the setting, and sometimes that means work working within limitations that you might not like. It might go against THE MESSAGE. But well, the message shouldn't be the thing that defines your story. That's not racism or sexism, that's just reality. And the weird thing about all of this is that there's actually a perfectly viable way of introducing ethnic diversity into Middle Earth. There's entire nations and cultures to the south of Mordor, where the people are explicitly stated to be dark-skinned, who really don't get much exploration in Tolkien's work. Some of them even end up aligning themselves with Sauron during the War of the Ring because they have long-standing grievances against Gondor. Wouldn't it be interesting to explore the historical context behind that conflict, maybe portray those people as more fleshed out, complex and interesting cultures in their own rights, maybe even suggest that they might have valid reasons for feeling aggrieved and that the people of Gondor might not be as morally righteous as we once thought. That would allow you to have a whole bunch of interesting new characters played by diverse actors, which also stays consistent with the world that Tolkien created. But hey, why put in that kind of work when you can just haphazardly toss in a bunch of race swap characters? Pat your on the back and call it a day. This is exactly the kind of lazy, nonsensical tokenization that sets alarm bells off for fans of the franchise, and it's the very thing that they've been pushing back against now. If you want to have a fantasy series with ass-kicking warrior women, characters of all races and creeds, and every kind of representation your mind can think of, then by all means go ahead and create your own. If it's good then people will watch it, but don't go rewriting and retconning characters and worlds that someone else created. People don't want a Lord of the Rings that reflects the world we live in today, with all of its grievances and gripes and identity politics. They want a Lord of the Rings that reflects the world Tolkien actually created. And I guess what I'm saying here is that if you can't or won't give them that, then you should probably do us all a favour and just leave it the fuck alone. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.